sin is very normalized in culture so you don't you don't even realize like oh me watching this woman cheat on her husband is skewing the way that i view marriage and skewing the way that i view commitment and relationships and godly marriages you're not making that connection what's up fam welcome back to our channel my name is tim this is my beautiful wife, Pauline, and you're tuning in to another episode of the W Podcast, where you get wisdom in the word with the Wheeler. Hey, so we are so excited to have you. We are doing question of the day, where we answer your anonymous questions that you send us. Yes, that's right. You can send us questions directly, and it's anonymous. We don't know who asks us what. And if you have a question about love, sex, dating, whatever it may be, Ask us, and we would love to try to get it on the podcast to not just help you, but all of our listeners. So, what is the question, the first one that we're doing? Okay, the first question is, how do I deal with lust slash porn because it's definitely addictive? Whoever this said, said it's definitely addictive. Here's the thing. Porn low-key, men and women struggle with it. It's not. I think a lot of times people just instantly think, it was a man who asked this question, and it very well could have been. But a lot of times, men and women deal yeah. with this. So please don't tune out if you're a lady because is this something that you may struggle with or maybe you have a friend who is struggling that you can help them out with. Um, but we're, we're going to get into it. We're, I'm going to start, and I'm going to answer it more from the practical and spiritual side. I want to do both because a lot of times I feel like when people come to the church, there's this sentiment that they never give any practical Solutions. I don't know if you feel that way. If you've heard that sentiment. People think that. Yeah. Depends on where you go to church, though. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, let me start with this. The first practical thing I'll say is, and so many people don't like this one. Christians don't, low-key don't like being told what to do, even though we have a Nobody Lord. Nobody does. We have a Lord who is supposed to, that That's means controller. Jesus said he wants to be our Lord because he knows we need it. That means controller. So, remember... If you really want to be a Christian, you don't get final say in the things that you do in your life. Like, right. Let's just put that out there. So the first thing I'll say is you really want to be mindful. If you're really serious about not watching porn, not struggling with lust, first thing you want to do is evaluate all the things that you're watching and listening to. Now, I know this may sound elementary. I know this may sound... It's important, though. It's fundamental. Yes, because... We don't realize how much messaging, covert and not covert, is like being pushed on us. Right. Like even we have a son now, and like I'm, I've started going back and watching some older shows that I watched growing up because I'm like, all right, like maybe, maybe this will be good for him because it's more of a kid show than watching something else. And you go back and watch some of them shows, and it's like, bruh, all they talk about is kissing, sex, girl look cute, look at that body. It's just like. I didn't realize it was this bad, but also I wasn't a Christian, so I wasn't tripping. But this shows you how ingrained sin is into culture. Right, but we don't even realize how many messages we've been taught that we didn't even realize, yo, this is actually so far against what God wants us. Yeah, it's so many seeds that were planted in our souls from a young age, because a lot of us started watching shows and things that weren't really not meant for us, and then some of them that were even meant for us had those little innuendo messages. And now you're in your 20s or your 30s asking yourself, why is this such a hard struggle for me? But the truth is, you know, the enemy's had his claws in us for a long time. And, um, I mean, all that stuff is intentional. The enemy wants us to struggle with sexual morality at a young age so that it's harder for us to get out of it because we're so used to it. Yeah. And this may not be for everybody. Because this person specifically said they struggle with lust. So we're not here to necessarily say what movies you should and shouldn't watch. But if you're somebody who struggles with lust, I definitely would suggest not watching anything where women are dressed uh, inappropriately or men are dressed inappropriately and Visuals, don't have, yeah. yeah, they don't have a lot of clothes on. Definitely don't need to be watching nothing that's naked. Because low key, people be out here watching porn and they call it TV show. It's like soft porn, yeah. Like it's not on Triple X, <laughs> right? Yeah, like it's not on the site, but it's on the show you watch. Right. Uh, there's so many shows out here, especially like reality TV shows, <laughs> where <laughs> where Love they, Island. yeah, <laughs> like shows like that. Like, come on, bro, you know you don't need to watch that. Come on, girl, you know you don't need to watch that. Booty cheeks, so many booty cheeks. Yeah, so 
that right there in and of itself can really help you because you need to protect what you're watching. Right, because then a lot of times you're spending time with the Lord and you're growing closer to him and you're having good quiet time and Bible reading and worship and all these things. But then sometimes we forget after our time is over, like the structured time, you know, we're bringing God with us throughout the day. And it's not like, you know, you're wondering basically what's going on and what's happening is all the time that you spent feeding your soul, feeding your spirit with good things, with the Holy Spirit, with love, with joy, with peace, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, all the fruits of the spirit, all the things that grow in you. When you spend time with Jesus, the things are being uprooted every time you kind of feed your soul with contrary, <laughs> you know, garbage. It's kind of like the same thing where like you have a really, you know, you have this really great hour long workout in the morning, but then you eat McDonald's for <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and right. dinner. And you're like, why am I not losing weight? And it's like, you're well, canceling it out. Exactly. You can't exactly. do both at the same time. The same thing as our, you know, our pastor likes to say, as it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. Just like Pauline said, naturally, spiritually, you cannot feed on junk and expect yeah. to walk in righteousness. Right, exactly. Because a lot of times, and, and I, I don't know what exactly this person, what their thoughts are, but a lot of times people who do struggle with less than porn, they're like very frustrated with themselves. Like, why am I still struggling with this? Why do I still find myself in this position? Why do I, what's happening? Like, I go to church, I go to small group, I read my Bible. Like, what is, why am I, what's wrong with me? And it's not anything wrong with you. You're human, you know? Like, you, anybody who has been subjected to these things, and like, it's, you really do have to, it's so hard. It's so hard when you get saved and you decide to live for Jesus. A lot of times we add things on. We add church attendance. We add Bible reading. We add worship. We add godly friends. But a lot of times we don't change the music we listen to. We just also listen to worship in addition to Bad Bunny or whatever is out there. Uh -huh. You know, like, it's you, you can't do both. It's just the same thing as when you get married. You cannot live like you're single anymore. You cannot have a beautiful sex life with your spouse and also flirt with every single guy or girl that you see. It doesn't work that way. You're choosing. To say yes to one means to say no to everything else. And that's true in marriage and it's true in your relationship with God. Now, obviously, it's very hard at times to figure out, well, what's godly and what's not. Because we're not going to sit here and say oh, every single secular thing, everything that's not a sermon. It's not what we're saying. <laughs> Because we, you know, there are shows that we, we watch and we enjoy. Like, we watch a lot of sports. Sports are not... <laughs> necessarily you know godly i mean it depends on how you look at it but you know it's not outright you know bible verses and things like that um or just all we watch is sermons all day long like no that's not what we're saying but this is where you lean on the holy spirit and you ask the holy spirit and also a lot of times you know common sense and or the holy spirit will lead you to well hey so you're asking me if xyz show is is something you should watch well it seems like every time you watch that show, you end up masturbating or you end up on a porn site. So maybe the result of that show is really not <laughs> something, you know, that, that you, you're, you're, you want or that's in your favor. And sometimes when you just kind of think things through, one of the guys that Tim listens to, he says, he says, say it out loud. And sometimes when you say things out loud or type it out or talk to a friend about it, you kind of come to your own conclusions. You come to your own solutions versus when the enemy has you in your head, you feel so frustrated. Yeah. So an example of that is I'm trying to stop watching porn, but I love to watch shows where women are in bikinis and the men are half dressed. Say it out loud. Does it make sense? No, it doesn't. And you probably aren't thinking about it like that, especially if it's a show you've watched for a long time or you've watched a lot of shows like that for a long time. You're just like, oh, this is just TV. This is just reality TV. This is what TV is. You're not saying, making the connection that, like, oh, the way these people are dressed, like, sin is very normalized in culture. So you don't, you don't even realize, like, oh, me watching this woman cheat on her husband is skewing the way that I view marriage and skewing the way that I view commitment and relationships and godly marriages. You're not making that connection. Um, and that's why it's good to talk it out because then someone could say, oh, okay, you like this show. They may say, I don't know anything about that show, but what do the people wear on that show? And you're like, oh, well, you know, they live in California, so they wear a lot of bathing suits. And it's like, okay, well, what kind of bathing suits? Like, do you see a lot of curves and bumps and... <laughs> Body parts and, you know, kind of talking through things can help you realize, oh, wow, I have normalized sin or the show has normalized sin for me. Yeah. Here's why this matters, because when you're in a relationship, 
everything you do will affect your spouse. So if you're watching porn, that is going to affect your spouse, whether they know it or not, whether it's because if they don't know it, it can still affect them because maybe you're not able to fully connect with your spouse, especially intimately because your heart is being pulled by all of these other things that you're watching. Or maybe you have unrealistic expectations because in the videos you watch, they swing in from the rafters and your wife ain't really doing that. And you think there's something wrong with her when it's really you. So you got to be mindful of that. And then two, if they find out, obviously it's heartbreaking. You know, you get, am I not enough? All of the trust, all that stuff. Uh, So the second thing practically I want to say is maybe you need to change who you hang around. Maybe the the friends that you have are not good influences on you. Because the Bible says bad company corrupts good character. Like we can't, we can't outrun that. That's pretty clear. And we're not saying that you need to cast away everybody that doesn't love God in your life. But we are saying the closest people to you, the people that you do life with the most, really do need to be loving God and pursuing him the way that you are. Because that's going to help you. You want people who are pushing you closer to God, not further away. And what I mean by that is if you're hanging around people who are constantly saying, yo, watch this. Yo, look at that. Yo, we all remember growing up, most guys, the friends you had when you were in school, a girl walked by. Zen. Like, your neck is turning. Now, if you're having friends who still do things like that, there's no chance that you're going to be able to overcome your lust addiction because your lust addiction is predicated on what you feed it. And if you're continually feeding it that, then it's going to continue to thrive. Yeah, it's like that saying that says um, the dog that barks is the one that you feed it or something. Or the lot. Lab- what is, it's the loudest. <laughs> the dog that barks the loudest is the one that you feed. So if you are, if that dog is your lust issue, then a lot of times it's because it expects you to feed it. You've been feeding it. But you have to, you also go through a period of like hearing that dog bark for a long time and not getting annoyed by that dog or knowing like, hey, this is a temporary thing. Like we're not about to say it's going to be easy because everybody's level of it. Like addiction is a real thing and we're not, we don't know, you know where everyone's level is at. Some people it's going to be easier for you, and you can just walk away cold turkey. Other people, it's going to feel like withdrawal. Yeah. Now, let's move on to the spiritual piece. To me, this is probably more important than the practical, but I know y'all like to hear practical stuff, which is important as well. But spiritual thing, the first thing I want to say is that loving God is not going to be enough. You ask this question, I bet you probably love God, because otherwise, why would you care about your lust and your porn addiction? Most people don't. But because you asked, that lets me know you probably love God, which means clearly that hasn't been enough because it's still something that you've been struggling with. And again, no condemnation. We actually really respect you. Sorry we haven't said it sooner for asking this question. So thank you. Um, But loving God isn't enough. It's going to take the fear of God or the reverence. That's what it means in the Bible when the Bible says fear God to reverence him, to hold him in high regard. That is really the key to this. And this is a fresh revelation that we kind of just figured out, not necessarily when it comes to lust of porn, but just in general, we heard an awesome sermon um, by someone named John Bevere. You can actually look it up, Awe of God. I actually highly recommend you do. But he brought up this whole concept of having the fear of God or reverence of God. And this verse blew me away because I've read it before, but I never realized, yo, this is the key right here to avoiding things that God has asked us to avoid. So let me just read it. Proverbs 16, 6 says this, unfailing love and faithfulness makes atonement for sin, but f- mm, let me restart. Unfailing love and faithfulness makes atonement for sin, by fearing the Lord, people avoid evil. Proverbs 16, 6. Bro, that last sentence. By fearing the Lord, people avoid evil. Sometimes we make living as a Christian complicated. Mm-hmm. And it can be complicated, but sometimes the scripture lays it out so simply. By fearing the Lord, people avoid evil. And that hit home for me because it's like, man. Why is it that people who love God, who are pastors, who are preachers, why do they fall away from the faith? And a lot of times we're like, I don't know, like, do they not love God anymore? Um, but in that sermon that I referenced, he said he asked one, of the, one pastor who had a big, big ministry and fell, he asked him, when did you fall out of love with God? And the pastor said, I never fell out of love with God. I never feared him. And that just hit me home 
Because if you don't fear God, it's not really going to affect your decision making. Because you can love. Let's get practical. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You all grew up. Did you always listen to your parents? Did you always obey them? No, you didn't. One, because we're just naturally sinful. But two, a lot of times, especially when it's a, a mom and a son relationship, mm. a lot maybe for women too, you can speak to that, but a lot of times in that mom-son relationship, the mom will tell the kid what to do and the kid won't listen, not because they don't love their mom, but because they don't have that fear or that reverence of their mom. Like, I, I don't really want to mess. She's not bigger than I ain't really trying to mess with her. Not all moms. Some moms is like that. But for sometimes that situation, and then that mom will say, don't make me tell your dad. And instantly, yeah. you cut it out because there's just a different reverence or awe that you may have for your dad. That's a way that we kind of want you to think about this. Like, when you think about God, like, do you really have that awe and reverence of, if I watch this right now, I know it's going to break my God's heart. Do I care? Like, do I, does that alone make me comfortable enough to not do it? Yeah. It's very similar with, like, really any authority figure if you have a boss at work. Uh, you don't usually want to piss them off or growing up if you had a you know your principal or your teacher usually the principal is a little bit a little bit more has more authority and people are more afraid of the principal and um, of course we don't mean it in like an abusive manner just more of like this person has the power to either make my day really great or make my day really awful and i would prefer the great side um and you know looking at god in the same way like you know principals parents teachers coaches that love us they don't want to hurt us or punish us. And, and how much more God if those people are um, sinful? You know, God has no sin. He's completely perfect. Like, he does not want to harm us. He wants to do good things for us and bring us blessings. But he's like, I can't bring them to you if you are going to mistreat them or abuse them and not appreciate them. Yeah. And this reverence thing, like, please don't miss this, that this is just going to help you not look at porn. Like, this is in every area of your yeah. life. I'll get vulnerable. A situation that happened to me yesterday, it's very, and like, this is just simple. This is not like any big deal. But I was serving in my church, and one of the instructions we have is, hey, don't park close to the building. Park far away at a designated place that we have for you. And I'm be honest, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to park close to the building. And I was leaning towards doing that. But one of the things that got we're running me. Running late. Go, tell the whole story. We were. It's like, not just because we were running late. I just wanted to park. Okay, I'll <laughs> give some grace. But I mean, that helped. That I I did want to do it because we we're running late. But anyway, I had a struggle internally. Am I going to obey the rules that I know I should do, or am I going to park further away, which would inconvenience me? I had this revelation yesterday because of this event. But a lot of times we think about, you know, you know the verse, obedience is better than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. There's a verse that talks about that. And a lot of times, some people, instead of obeying what God told them to do, they'll sacrifice in a different area. Like, oh, God, like, I know you don't want me to watch porn, but you know what? I don't smoke or I don't drink. Yeah. I'm sacrificing that because I still would like to do that, but I'm sacrificing. And God is like, I asked you to do something. I want you to be obedient. Yeah. It's very similar than like, when you're growing up and, like, your siblings, anyone who has siblings, <laughs> and your parents are like, oh, go clean your room. And you're like, but he didn't clean his room. And your mom's like, I, I didn't ask you. I, that's not your concern. That's not your issue. A lot of times they're trying to like distract God or like redirect him. And it's like, yeah, you're not the one in charge here. <laughs> like he is. Yeah. So my point with that story was I ended up choosing to park in the further parking lot. And for me, what it came down to was the Holy Spirit reminded me of the verse where it says, it's a sin to know what you should do and you don't do it. Mm -hmm. And I had a decision to make. Do I have a reverence for God enough? Because only me and God would know. No one is checking for my car out in the parking lot. Only me and him would know. Do I care enough about sinning against God that I'm going to park where I want to park? Or am I going to go out of my way, inconvenience myself, and do what I know is right because I want to be in right standing with God. I want to stay intimate in a close relationship with God. Like I don't, It's not worth it to yeah. sin in that way and then lose connection with God. And that's where you really, as you mature in your faith, that's where you really want to be is, will this help me stay close to God or, or push me further away? You really want to be in that mindset, and that will carry you. And let me just read the verse again. By fearing the Lord, people avoid evil. That's all it says. It doesn't say by fearing the Lord and loving him and doing all of this and da 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 
By fearing the Lord, people avoid evil. Simple way to not sin. Simple way to stay away from things that you don't want to do. Fear of the Lord. The last thing I'll say on the spiritual tip is tell somebody else you're struggling. What? Tell somebody I watch porn. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. That's not an option. Tell someone you're struggling. Here's why. The Bible says it like this in James 5, 16. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. How do you get that healing? Let's read it again. Confess your sins to somebody. Let them pray for you. And that's when the healing comes. It doesn't come when you say, I'm going to be strong-willed and I'm going to do what I want. It's no let me go and tell somebody else that I'm struggling who can help keep me accountable, who can help pray for me. Because at the end of the day, we all need help in order to live this Christian walk out. None of us are perfect. We all need other people who can help us. And this is a great way for you to do that. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? Yeah. So um, I have a couple of things to you. Uh, the first one is to remind yourself why it's harmful. A lot of times when we get into bad habits, into sin, uh, in the moment or right after the moment we are just flooded with shame and just beating ourselves up which of course is not from god but then some time passes and you're further away from the scenario i get this way with smacks and sweets and things like that and then you know you're when when you have an opportunity to indulge in that addiction or that harmful act again you forget how bad you feel after you eat it. And like, we've all had situations where you're like, okay, this is my cheat meal. I'm going to eat this. And then afterwards you're like, oh, that wasn't even worth it. Like it wasn't even that good. And sin is often like that. Sin makes a lot of promises that it can't keep. It, um, I forget the other term. It's like it cashes checks that it bounces or something like that. And it's so true. Like sin is really based, um, on lies like it, it doesn't it doesn't fulfill the promises that the lord can so just remind yourself why it's harmful remind yourself how bad you feel afterwards and like it may you may feel good in the moment and i know that sin always does um but then afterwards you don't feel good you don't feel good about what you did and you want to uh, make sure that you avoid that um you also want to think about your future think about your future marriage think about your future kids and the testimony that you want to tell them of like, hey, you know, I did struggle with this, but the Lord sought me through and he um, healed me of this addiction and this is how he did it. Um, but every time we willingly choose to sin, we get in the way of that testimony and delay that testimony. And I'm not saying just by you simply stopping watching porn one time is going to solve everything, but you making that decision daily, even sometimes every hour, every moment, depending on who you are and how deep you're in it. But just remember about, you know, what you are gaining, um, not only on earth, you know, in 10, 15, 20, 30 years down the road, but also in heaven, um, how you are freeing up space in your soul and in your heart for the Lord to inhabit. Every time you decide to turn away from sin, um, you are allowing God to fill you and like, you know, kind of replacing that a uh, bad thing with a good thing. Um, and the other thing, a practical answer is to download some software. There's great software called Covenant Eyes that you can download to protect from like any sites on your phone or on your um, laptop or iPad. Obviously, almost everybody in this day and age has multiple screens. I know you at least have a phone. Um, so you want to make sure that you have some type of software that prevents you like don't get in your own way protect yourself <laughs> um, from yourself <laughs> protect yourself from your addictions and sin um, by getting a software installed so that you you can't even look at certain sites um, and give someone your passwords not necessarily maybe to the to the software but also just to your phone and your devices in general especially if you're married um, but if you're not like if you have a brother, if you're a man, if you have a brother, if you're a sister, if you have um, like a biological sister or sister in Christ who, you know, after like Tim said, you've, you've shared what your struggle is and say, hey, I'm struggling with this and I would really want your help. And a lot of people, when you share things like that to, with them, it is awkward when you're like, oh, I'm struggling with this. And they're like, okay, so like I'll pray for you. And that's great. But a lot of times they'll feel really happy to know that there's something special 
practical that they can do. So you can ask them to do either monthly or bi-weekly check-ins or whatever you feel is necessary um, to stop this behavior. And you know the enemy's not gonna like that at all. So you definitely should do that because it works. Um, and then the third thing is to learn the truth behind the porn industry. A lot of times the enemy romanticizes porn um, and certain things like that we see in culture to be like, oh, well, this is like a beautiful thing. And like, you know, sometimes you hear things in the church where people will say like, oh, like sex is so beautiful and all these different things. And it is, but like, there's also, I feel like the Lord has made it in a way like it's beautiful, but it's also sacred. It's not something that's supposed to be recorded. It's not something that's supposed to be observed by anybody else besides the people who are doing it the married people that are doing it um so a lot of times the enemy can make you feel like oh well it's a good thing like you're you're just enjoying sex you're just enjoying the bodies that the lord has made and da, 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 like twisting it up and within the truth like he's telling the truth but he's twisting it up um to get you further into this addiction so just educating yourself on the porn industry and learning like a lot of everybody in the porn industry is an actor <laughs> they're not intimate lovers they're not in relationships you know like they don't love each other um a lot of them are on drugs while they're performing because what they're doing is painful um no one's really meant to be penetrated for hours upon end and you know they're doing choreography it's not it's not real and when you know that um it makes it less enjoyable and it just also makes you feel like ugh, gross like i'm you know when you learn that you're like contributing to sex trafficking and things like that it's really i mean it's a pretty big turn off um and there's a guy named Joshua Broom who is, um, he's like, a, I don't know if he's officially a minister now, but he has a ministry. Um, and he is an ex-porn star. So look his story up. And um, now he's a follower of Christ and um, spreads the gospel. And God is using his life in a really big way to shed light on this exact issue, this exact addiction. Um that the porn industry has produced um, and just listening to his story and learning more about the insight and like what actually goes on it is really like I was already turned off but like that just turned me off even more like to another level so look him up people like him um, to learn more about the porn industry so that it's not as fantastical and it's not as um, attractive to you and then um, the last tip I would give is to get a new addiction or a hobby. And I say addiction kind of lightly, um, but yeah, you, a lot of times when people quit smoking, they gain a lot of weight. And the reason for that is they're so used to putting something in their mouths with the cigarette. So when they stop using cigarettes, they'll put like chips and you know snacks and things in their mouth. So, because they're just used to that, that movement. And of course, I mean, it depends, of course, how <laughs> you look at it, like which one is better. You don't want to become extremely obese, but um, you want to make sure, you know, the way your brain and your body works, like you can't just, a lot of people can't just stop doing something cold turkey, especially if you're really deep in it. If you've been addicted to porn for 10, 15, 20 years, it is going to take a process. You're going to go through a process, like a detox, a withdrawal, all those things. Um, so that's why you want to make sure that you get in a new environment. So if you live by yourself and you found that, okay, you know, I'm a lot of times watching porn when I am up late at night or after I've had a long day of work. That's kind of my way of like de-stressing. Maybe instead of doing that, because I know that masturbating and porn is, you know, like a release for a lot of people. Um, maybe you start going to the gym. Maybe you start, uh, maybe you get a roommate so that you have somebody to talk to and you're not home alone. Because a lot of, I've heard as well that people fall into porn kind of, um, binge sessions if you will uh, when they're feeling lonely when they're feeling really down about themselves so maybe if there's a way for you to like move in with a family member or move back home with your family or something like that i know that sounds very extreme get a dog like what well, it, it may sound extreme but this is an extreme matter like yeah god talks about if your eyes are causing you to lust like pluck your eye out yeah. and obviously he wasn't necessarily being literal but i think he said that so that you get the weight of this is a big today. deal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I know that that may make sense for, like, that exact example is going to make more sense for some people more than others. But do something new. Get in a new environment. Like, you have to kind of 
take a step back and observe yourself and say, okay, the last five times that I fell into a porn, um, a porn binge, what was I doing? What yeah. happened to me beforehand? Well, how was I feeling? Did I have a horrible day at work? Did my girlfriend just break up with me? Like, kind of follow with, with the patterns or what are your triggers and make sure you put up guards against those things so that porn is not your way of um, medicating whatever issues you have. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So I think that's a great way to sum it up right there. Yeah. Put yourself in a new environment. Put yourself with new friends. Start reading your word more, getting into your word, really developing that reverence and that fear of God. And eventually, you will move toward a lifestyle that helps you avoid evil. This has been another episode of the W Podcast. We'll see y'all next week. Bye. Thanks for watching this video. To get more Christian relationship advice, subscribe to our channel. And make sure you check out our other videos as well.